Hey guys, Ian here from Hard Auto Sports. We are going to be doing a do-it-yourself project. Uh, we're installing a Kurt trailer hitch on the 2014 Scion FRS. And I uh, want to give you a couple of uh, ideas here. What this car is set for is for autocross and track. But it gets a little annoying once you have to go be at home, swap over to your competition setup, drive there, or repeat, and drive back. By then, your tires are already starting to wear it down. So my solution to this is you're gonna have to find a way to transport them. Yes, you can put them in your car, but why don't you make it a little bit easier Put yourself on a little trailer hitch. So we're going with it. Today. So we uh, got in touch with automotive accessories Auto, uh, online. They gave me a lot of information that could help me. Uh, we had a little bit of trouble with the original setup we were going with, so they offered us the better deal because it's uh, the, the previous one was discontinued. What we're doing today is we're going to do the do-it-yourself tutorial on how to install all the the, the, uh, the hitch. And we're going to also do the uh, the wiring harness for it so we can see how everything's going to operate. Uh, currently, right now, the trailer is not here. Uh, it's still in, in uh, ship, shipping, so it's going to be here sometime next week, and we'll do another video on how to set it up and install and check the wiring. For now, we're going to take care of this. We have, right now, a few, I'm going to give you guys a few safety tips. Uh, you're going to want to have safety glasses, which I have on me currently. You're going to want to have gloves, and you're going to want to have the proper tools. Tool recommendations is going to be torque wrench. You're going to want to take, take, take the, uh, you're going to have some sockets, a couple of uh, wrenches, uh, ratchet wrenches that I have available in, my tool, in the tool chest. We're going to uh, go step by step. A lot of, uh, you're going to obviously need a jack, and you're going to need a couple of jack stands. You don't want the car to fall on you. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, again, the, the current trailer hitches do come with all hardware and instructions necessary to take care of this. So we're going to go step by step. I'm going to show you what comes with the kit in sections. So let's go start that right now. All right, so let's see what we have here. We have the uh, the Kurt Class 1 trailer hitch for the 2012 to 2014 Scion FRS. This is a Class 1 trailer hitch. Uh, used to good, it's uh, strong enough to handle up to a thousand pounds. And uh, it takes, it goes from a one inch to one and quarter inch adapter to uh, attach a trailer. Um, it comes with all necessary hardware, uh, as you can see, which is right here. You got the um, the hook with the lock pin, all the necessary hardware for installation, and also we have in here is the wiring harness, which will also be taken care of today. Uh, another part for Kurt hitches, it does have all the instructions left uh, signaled right here, and we're going to go as a step by step. For it. As I said, you're going to need a torque wrench. I'm going to show you. Uh, you're going to be going roughly around 50 pounds, give or take. So we have a cobalt rent, uh, torque wrench that's good up to 240 pounds. Um, the necessary equipment, we may need to use a pry bar and so on and so forth. So as we go on with this tutorial on how to install it, we will go step by step. First thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to jack up the car. So I'm going to take care of that and then I'm going to start again. All right, we're going to be starting off with actually the back of the vehicle. We uh, we have to do a couple of things. Uh, first things first is we have to remove the rear strut brace. And in order for this hitch to actually work, we're going to have to remove the TRD style rear diffuser. To me, it's only a show purpose item, but it does look good. So we're going to continue from here. Um, what you have to do for this in particular kit is you need to remove the exhaust. Uh, for my application, I actually had to remove the mufflers off. The uh, bolts bolt up right through here. 
Um, you have to remove the grommet. You have to bore out the hole a little bit. Um, you can clean that up with a little silicone so you can prevent rust and it'll look real clean. Uh, we're working on to the other side. And uh, so, so far so good. Um, these little strings that you can see are uh, so you can snake the anchors in. It's a very, very innovative type of thing. I like this. But uh, let me get on to the other side and I will show you how this is going to sit. As you can tell, we had, because of the snow that we've been having, the back bumper brackets are broken. So those are going to have to get replaced. I'm going to have to get in touch with Toyota. And uh, we'll go from there. So, Okay, we just hand tightened the hitch. It is a 19 millimeter for the nuts. I don't know if you can see them. Let me get a good view for you. Just, there we go. So, bolts up nice right into the frame. Um, easy cleanup. Let me check the other side for you. On this side, it's a three point for extra strength, I guess for torque purposes. Next is installing the torque specs onto this so it is safe to use and then we will move on to wiring. All right, the next thing you need to do with this hitch is you gotta get the torque specs right. You have to use an extension unless you decide to take the rear bumper off, which I highly do not recommend. And the torque specs say 110 pounds. Uh, you're, if I was using a nine inch extension, I had to add an additional 35 and a quarter pounds of torque on my wrench to compensate from the extension, which equaled out to 110 point one two five foot pounds of torque so it's a little bit over the recommendation uh, bolts up solid it's like I said it's a well designed kit next thing I'm going to do as a part of the tutorial is discuss the wiring I uh, gotta give a shout out to Kurt Hitches for this class one and it sits quite level with the car and it gives you some areas to give play on the port so you can use it it shows right here maximum torque for the pit for the uh, paid vehicle for the vehicles is 150 pounds of, of torque the trailer gross weight that I can handle up to is 1,000 pounds. Uh, I'm trying to get a shot up. There we go. Uh, if you could see that thoroughly, this is what it's specced out to. If you have any questions, you can go up to Kurt Manufacturing or Kurt Trailers and ask for any information. Next step is to install the ex mufflers again so you don't sound like you got a blunderbuss down at Riverhead Raceway. So stay tuned. All right, guys, we're back with the, uh, it's a new day. We're doing the electrical this morning, or this afternoon, I should say. We are uh, pretty much done with the install of the hitch. Now I'm gonna go over the wiring harness and the, se the steps that you're gonna need to do to take care of it properly. Uh, let me flip this over real quick. All right, with the wiring harness that is a, a came with this kit, it gives you with everything necessary, down to all the necessary components, as you can tell, the zip ties to hold it onto the body, uh, butt connectors, your power supply that you have to run, and an inline fuse, which I'm going to show you real quick. 
I do apologize for the mess. It's been a very uh, exhausting run. I have been going all out trying to fix things. But here we go. This is the wiring harness that we have to work with. This piece, you, this unit, self-explanatory, tells you where all the wires got to go. And this unit goes into the back and is stored in the back of the vehicle. Now, with that being said, it's very simple to operate this unit. So I'm going to show you what needs to be done step by step and how to wire this. So first off, before we do any type of electrical work, you're going to want to disconnect the positive side of the, the negative side of the battery so you don't have any grounding issues. So we will get back to you as soon as we're done with that. You should be using a wrench for this in particular application. All right, what I just did here is start up the power supply. Currently, right now, I don't have to worry about anything arcing. I did not put the 10 amp fuse into the fuse holder. Uh, we wired up the feed line that has to go all the way to the back of the car. And you, all you need is a 12 millimeter socket to get the, that nut off so you can put the power supply on. Next thing I got to do is deactivate the power supply I've off the ground end. So I got to remove this battery terminal so we don't have any grounding issues. And, uh, then we could start feeding everything through. Uh, that looks like it's going to be a 10 millimeter, so I'm going to take the 10 millimeter wrench that I have available to me in my tool chest, and we're going to go from there, and we're going to start feeding everything into where it needs to go. So I'll give you an update once it's done. All right, so back to the wiring. We, you can see that it's been guided and redirected away from the exhaust off the battery. There's a little channel right here right before the heat shield for the over pipe on this car and then we brought it all the way down and found a way to line it up we can't really see the wire where it's going in but we actually decided to put it through the frame rail all the way to the back which if you look carefully probably see hanging down a little bit yeah there it is and what we did is we got it up above the rear subframe obviously avoiding all moving mechanical parts such as the differential the axle shafts control arms and we were able to route it all the way to the trunk as you can tell right here. So next is connecting this power supply to the junction block, which we're going to do as the next step. All right, we just decided to uh, take care of the running of the wires into safe locations. We got it over the frame rail, uh, well through the frame rail, I should say. We brought it over the subframe in the rear to keep it away from moving components such as the drive shaft, the, uh, the axles, and so on and so forth. And we found two nice grommets to run the wires through. If you look right here, we put it right through, just put a tiny hole, and it kept the seal. The wire that we're going to be siliconing for this, once we test all the connections, is the one that goes to the main plug to the trailer itself. Now. There's multiple ways you can do go with this. You can get go to any automotive repair shop or aftermarket shop and request rubber grommets for specific applications. Uh, and you can get these pre-designed so they're direct bolt-on. If you're not able to take care of that and you just want to improvise, a little tube of all-purpose silicone or uh, RTV, the uh, gasket sealer, will work just as well. The uh, wires are set up within length. Next, we're going to be disassembling the rear interior so we can get access to the rear of the lights because we need the plugs to plug into the junction box for the trailer hitch. So I'm going to get going on with that. You're going to need a panel popping tool. Uh, you can get those over at Pet Boys, AutoZone, or any automotive tool place. Uh, it's just a bunch of clips, and uh, it's as simple as one, two, three.
All right, I'm back with the uh, wiring harness. Let me zoom out a little bit, there we go. As you can tell, it's a simple plug and play unit. It shows in the instructions which wires go where. So I use that to my advantage. Uh, the junction block is very self-explanatory. Uh, just gotta find a location to mount the ground and securely fasten the junction block, which I'm going to mount the junction block in a safe location with the 3M tape in a flat surface where it's not going to be exposed to getting damaged in any way, shape, or form. Now, it's the same on the other side. It's all plug and play. All that really needs to be connected is the power supply, which is the black wire, and that's what I'm going to take care of now. As you can see that it's already ran. I have all the length I'm going to need, maybe a little extra, which is fine by me, because these wires are going to sit under the car, and I'm just going to plug and go. And it does give you a self-tapping screw to mount the ground onto the body. I'm going to take the liberty of mounting this onto a chassis, a chassis ground, if it's possible, where I do not have to drill into anything. Um, there isn't really any options for that, so I'm going to probably have no choice but to use the self-tapper. And uh, that's perfectly fine. Uh, so I'm going to get going on that right now. Alright, we got all of the power taken care of. We have the plugs put in. We have the junction block set, wired up right over here. Ground is now set. Next is the... Tuck the wires in an area where they're not going to be in the way, chafing, or going bad. So once that's done, we can reassemble the interior, and uh, I'll give a little review and difficulty and components needed, or tools I should say, that are needed to take care of the job properly at home. Thank you for watching this do-it-yourself video. I hope this becomes a helpful video for those who want to do do-it-yourself projects. Uh, the kit takes 45 minutes if you have experience, 90 minutes without. It's a simple bolt-on kit, very simple to use, very safe. Uh, tools you're going to need for this are going to be a 9mm socket, a torque wrench, and an extension. That's for the torquing down of the anchors to the trailer hitch itself to the frame. The uh, wiring harness is simple. Uh, best way to go is run it through the frame rail. There's ports on these cars where you can just snake it through. You don't have to worry about the, wa the wire dragging on the ground for that purpose. Uh, it's, if you have access to aftermarket uh, grommets to run the wires through, more, that's, ha you've got half the battle. For this project, I had to fabricate the rubber grommets to act allow the wires to pass through with a little silicone. Uh, the only thing that you need to make sure is you've got to check your connections. Uh, do not, uh, another side note, depending if you have an uh, aftermarket exhaust or exhaust for this application, you have to make sure that it will work. Uh, for that purposes, if you have an exhaust that has a side chamber right before the muffler, uh, best example is the J2 exhaust, which I actually have, uh, it does not work for this application so we're upgrading uh, the next video which should be this week is the bolt-on installation of the j2 quad tip it's another bolt-on kit a uh, little bit more of a rumble a little bit more power uh, after that we'll have more videos we have a brake upgrade to go for for this car and we have a crank pulley to take care of a short shifter we're going to do a do-it-yourself on how to do a four-point harness with the stock seat. This is a snap-in seat courtesy of Sparco. And we're going to go through a couple of tricks here and there on how to set your car up for autocross and for track purposes. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And stay tuned. We'll have more coming.